So we're gonna start with the handle first and you'll notice it's three inches wide. Now, the reason why it's not um, the traditional four inches to make a one inch strap or handle is because I'm using a, a bit of a different method um, on doing my straps on this backpack. And um, if you don't like it, you can do it the way you want. Just make them four inches wide or make them, you can do them at three inches and then fold them down to a three quarter inch strap. It's up to you. Okay, so what I've done with the, grab the handle piece and I've marked, you can do with a pen or a pencil, one inch lines to separate the three inches. And then what we do is we're gonna fold one over to, one raw edge over to one of the folded lines. So you've got a one inch fold. And then grab your iron and press that down. Now all your three inch wide straps that are in the um, PDF, they're done this way. And fold it over so it meets the other side. So you're gonna have two folds all at one inch, one inch wide. Then, see, you've got the two folds. Then we're gonna grab one raw edge again and fold in to that fold. So it'll end up being a half an inch wide. So press that down. And do the other side. Then fold over again. So you'll be folding both folded edges into the middle. So you could do them together like this if you want and then just press together so they both meet in the middle. This way you have no raw edges but you've eliminated one of the thicknesses. So instead of being four pieces thicknesses wide, it's only three. And I think it looks nice and neat. Makes it easier to sew on a domestic machine when you're using, trying to put these in, um, in all the layers. So when you have your connectors going in and then you've got your panels and it ends up quite thick. So anything to help with those thicknesses. So now what we're going to do, because they're all folded nice and neat now, we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to show it, uh, sew it down. Okay, so we're at the machine now and I've got my handle piece. So facing with the folds underneath, okay? Because you've pressed it, you don't need to pin or clip or anything, especially if you're just using, I'm using a, um, a drill fabric, as you know. It's a sort of a, it's a little bit thicker than a quilting cotton. And uh, I find it's really great for bags. We have a really good range here at Spotlight in Australia with some really cool prints on them. Okay, so put under your needle, put under your foot, sorry. And we're gonna top stitch. So there's no need to back stitch on this at all. And it's gonna be uh, going one centimetre or three eighths of an inch from the folded edge. So because the folds are half an inch, we're going to catch that underneath and it's gonna look nice and neat. So you can put that on the top stitching. I do a four on my machine. trim your threads so as you can see we've we've caught that on the other side and then we'll do the other the next fold and then uh, we top stitch another um, line uh, next to both of those again so you'll end up with four rows of stitching it's mainly a decorative then it looks more decorative I think with the two and because you're going so far in you want it, you want that stitch on the edges too, just to balance it out. It's up to you, you can add as many rows of stitching as you want. Okay, so there we go. The back of the handle is now done. 
um, if you do pull apart you can see a little bit of the inner facing but it can be used as a handle so you're not even going to see that so now I'm just going to put another row of stitching next to that and mm. I tend to do that I tend to put my foot next to it and go over just half of the width again so it ends up probably about an eighth of an inch from the edge So the handle's now done. So you want to go and grab all the connectors that are three inch wide, uh, your straps that are three inch wide, and uh, repeat with those and do exactly the same thing as what you've done here. And then I'll show you the next step. So I finished all of the connectors and the straps and I've grabbed the ones that will be attached to the hardware for now. Um, and then we put them away and we'll attach them to the main panels later. So you want to grab your closure strap A. That's your one that's 10 inches long. And your two back strap connectors, which are three and a half inch long. And your O-rings or your rectangle rings. I'm using O-rings, one and a half inch O-rings on this backpack. So put two of your rings in between the connectors and use a clip to hold them together and on your closure strap you want to put one end of your closure strap through the two um, rings fold over one inch in there and then another inch so you should have two inches and put your two o-rings on there now we're just going to base the two smaller connectors on the edges mm -hmm just to keep them neat and closed for now to save time in between doing connectors I don't tend to snip the threads until I'm finished so then stitch across that one inch fold wherever you feel comfortable you could make it shorter if you want it's up to you I find that one inch at least you can move with that and your foot can get in there on this one it's not a base you'll be stitching across so you'll be going back stitching at both ends making it nice and secure and trim your threads okay so we'll put all them away for now and then I'll show you a bit, little bit later of how to attach them all. So we're making the back straps now. So you'll need your back strap connectors, which you've already done, and your back strap B pieces, which there's four of. So I'm going to show you how to put one of them together now. So grab one back strap B piece and lay your connector in the center of the uh, shorter raw edge right sides together um, if you've got directional fabric just remember that the connectors will be at the bottom when they come out so i've had to make sure that my dogs are facing standing up on this piece whereas on this piece they're upside down and standing right way up so it doesn't really matter with that piece okay so we're just going to base that the moment. Face your connector. Once you've basted your connector on, then grab your second piece of the um, backstrap B. Lay that over the top and grab your clips. Or you can grab your clips or we can just stitch that piece over top for now and then we can do the sides. So I might just do that. You can put a clip on if you like. So that's at a quarter of an inch seam. 
stitch back stitch and stitch right across so back stitch at both ends then we go down one side now because I'm using the one and a half inch um, o-rings it is a little bit tight squeeze on the side so we have to adjust as we go along yeah so quarter inch along here also and make sure you back stitch it at both ends so they don't unravel when we turn One side's done. Now because we want to turn and it's a very tight squeeze if we're to stitch all the way down and try to turn through here, I'm only going to do an inch or two up here and then an inch or two down the bottom here and then turn through the really big gap and then top stitch to close it all. Do a quarter inch on this side and back stitch again. Now really push those o-rings to the side so that you don't lose your seam allowance. You go try and go as far past them, like well, as close to them as you can. And I might stop about there so that I can still get them through. So as you can see, I've gone out a little bit but I guess when we top stitch I can sort of squash that in and tidy that up a bit then we go down to the other end where the raw edge is and we'll stitch down here for a couple of inches making sure you back stitch again starting to pile up over there put them in the bin okay so we're going to turn this through so just grab your o-rings well actually before we do that snip off your corners and grab them grab your o-rings and you should be able to just sort of pull them through like that it's a little tight with fleece on two pieces okay so that's the one end and this one might be just a touch more difficult. It shouldn't be too hard because it is only short, so. Push that through there. I tell you, it's, it's easier to birth a bag than do this. There we go. Okay, so then you grab, I use a chopstick, a wooden chopstick. Push your corners out, up near the, the O-ring. Trim up all those little loose threads. And then go, take your clips, cause, or your pins, whichever you prefer to use, and go over to your iron, and iron that flat, and uh, come back with your clips on, and we'll st top stitch it together. Okay, so I've ironed the whole uh, back strap now. So I've clipped together the raw edges and folded them in a quarter of an inch. And now we're going to go around and top stitch. So make sure you they're all lined up perfect. You've got no little bits sticking out. You don't want to miss that seam. So you want to go right as close to the edge as you can, about one eighth of an inch on a top stitching um, width. Don't need to back stitch here. Now 
always take my time when I top stitch because it is the stitch that everyone sees. And when you get down to the corner, about a stitch away from the edge, you want to drop your needle down. Mine stays in automatically. Um, you can always put it put it down when you stop and then pivot around to the top of the back strap and go across where the connector is. This will be a thick bit for if you have a domestic machine, but um, hopefully doing the, um, the connectors that way should help. And then one less thickness than normal. And then we go back down the other side. You might want to add more rows to your strap, that's up to you. I'm not going to because of the print of the puppy dogs on there, of the little uh, Frenchies. I'm going to leave them so that you can see them. So, there we go, that's the back strap finished. Now you just have to go and do your other one exactly the same way. And we'll put them aside for now until we connect them to the backpack. So you should have your... Um, 13 inch zipper ready because we're going to put the zip tabs on now. I'm using um, zipper by the yard so I don't have, I didn't have a, a zipper pull on mine or I don't and I don't have a zipper stop at the end at, of the zip. So I've had to put my uh, zipper pull on first and then I stitch across the opening so that I don't accidentally take it off when I'm opening and closing. Um, it's probably not um, too important on this because we're mainly keeping it together so that we can put the zipper tabs on nice and neatly. So you grab both your zipper tabs and you've got some woven interfacing on them and you place the uh, one and a quarter uh, raw edge on the end of the zipper and that's the one and a half should be the length. So we're going to stitch across that with a one centimetre seam or three eighth inch. Just make sure it's on nice and neat and doesn't slide over. No need to back stitch on this because you're going to fold over and top stitch. So you've we've stitched that right sides together then we fold that over and fold under. Now you're going to have a raw edge. Oh, my interfacing's come away from that too. I probably could give that a quick iron, but I'll be stitching that down so it won't matter. And I'll top stitch across there to catch the fabric on the other side. If you don't like that raw edge, you can always add another um, quarter of an inch or so, and then you can fold under and top stitch that. But you're not going to see it anyway, so. I'll top stitch across that. There we go. And then's your zipper tab, and that's the underside. But like I said, it's up to you if you want to fold under or not. No one's going to see it, and you can trim that down a little bit. And then just put the other one on. And you notice I'm using a number five zipper. They're usually a quarter of an uh, one and a quarter inch wide, and they're a little bit bigger in the teeth, so they actually look better, I think, on um, the outside of bags. A little bit more sturdier too. Fold that under again, make sure that it goes past the seam, then past the stitching. And trim up all your stitches, uh, your threads, and there we go. Our zipper tabs are done. Okay, we're going to 
fold the ends of our two back strap bees and our closure strap bee. So fold under about an inch and then another inch, or you can do less, it's up to you. I like to stick with an inch, it's nice and gives it a good length. Otherwise it becomes a bit too bulky, I find the shorter I do it. So whichever way your strap's going, only do it at one end. And stitch across that to secure it in place. Do that to your other two straps and then later on we will add them to the backpack when we're close to being finished.